Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. For the first story today, we have a CASA call to action. FDA citizens petition PMTA delay. So for those of you that don't know, the PMTA is very, very close. September 9th, 2020. And uh, to be honest with you, small businesses are still unsure whether they will be able to legally sell their products in the United States after the PMTA deadline. Well, with every bit of bad news in this industry, there seems to be a silver lining. And for you, the consumer, the silver lining is the places that aren't going to be around are having sales and clearance sales. So, this might be a good time to... Uh, Get on Google, find yourself your favorite online store, and maybe even ones that you haven't even purchased from in the past. Take a look at the sales they have out there. Personally, I just picked up a, uh, a GS Max for 30 bucks. Um, 8Vape has a coupon. PMTA, spend $88, and they'll give you $10 off your order. They didn't pay me anything for this, but I used that coupon myself. All right, so, CASA call to action. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. I'm asking everybody to get out there, go to this website, scroll down, and click here. Small manufacturers need additional time to prepare their PMTA applications. Now, I know not everybody's doing it, but for the small businesses that are, and are strapped right now trying to get all their lab work completed so that they can submit their paperwork to continue selling items. They need a little bit more time. And if you leave a comment, it'd be greatly appreciated by all these small businesses. Next up, this one's over at Reddit, PMTA Mega Thread. This is a place where you can go and check out and find out who has already declared that they're filing a PMTA or have already submitted their PMTAs. You got a favorite juice or favorite uh, coil that you need for your tanks? Better go find out if it's going to be uh, submitted for a PMTA because after September 9th, 2020, you're not going to be uh, able to find it in this country. So you might have to order from overseas or you're going to have to go to the rebuildable aspect of things. Our next story also comes from Reddit. There's been a story of uh, Vaporesso Gen Mods that uh, people have tried to update, and uh, the update itself bricked the device. Now, if you read through this uh, thread on Reddit, you come to find out that uh, the person that downloaded it didn't uh, take a look at the security aspect of downloading a file, because when Windows downloads a file, it protects that file. So you might have to unlock the, the uh, file for the uh, update to successfully take on your uh, Vaporesso Gen Mod. You can check out the thread yourself on Reddit. Next, got an article here from Forbes Magazine. Banning flavored jewel pods is actually dangerous. Study shows how lawmakers bungled the vape lung crisis response. Once again, we're a year away from a valley, the Avali outbreak that took place. And uh, this might be an interesting article for you to take a look at. It's been a little over a year. And everybody knows they've been banning things left and right. Pods. Flavored pods for your jewels, flavored pods for other devices. It varies by location, but the damage is done. According to the, the Centers for Disease Control, the volley was linked to a total of 2,800 hospitalizations and 68 deaths nationwide. And all of it came back to vitamin E acetate found mostly in bootleg cannabis oil cartridges sold on the illicit market, AKA the black market. And unfortunately, I have a feeling that uh, 
some of these vape manufacturers that have chosen not to submit a PMTA are still going to be available, but they're only going to be available on the black market. How can you regulate a device if it's already been banned and is only being sold on the black market? Next up on the news. This comes from New Zealand. Vaping smashes cigarette sales. Right regulation is now critical. Take a look at this article. Common sense. When you have a legal way for you to obtain vaping, which is 97% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes, guess what's going to happen to cigarette sales? You're going to see a rapid decline in cigarette sales as vaping products are clearly working. Take a look at the article. Interesting read. And the last bit on our 5-Minute Friday. Study finds rates of e-cigarettes and marijuana use not associated with vaping-related lung injuries. Like I said, it's been a year since the Evoli outbreak back last year, starting in September. And once again, additional data proves that it was vitamin E acetate that was the cause of this outbreak. And if you were using regular nicotine e-cigarettes or regular vaping devices without any nicotine in it, or even marijuana, as long as it did not have any oil in it, which causes lipoid pneumonia if you breathe in vaporized oil, as long as it didn't have any vitamin E acetate in it or any kind of oil in the juice, you weren't going to get sick. Only these illicit black market cartridges were the cause of 2,800 cases and 68 deaths. Don't let anybody confuse you. Vaping is 97% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. All right, that wraps it up. Five Minute Friday. Have a great one. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.